we have everybody. We have... This is precedent setting. We've never done it by Zoom before. <laughs> Unprecedented for sure. So Darren says we are ready to go. If you want to go ahead and start the meeting, we are live. Okay, let's just give our attendees a moment or two to join in. I see a lot of folks joining, including the Du Bois family. That's nice. I'll just give it a minute or so to let people join and then we'll kick it off. All these neckties, wow. Once a year, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, you've got a new backdrop, Tom. Who else? No other new backdrops at all. I'm up at Foothills at Vista Point. Back yeah, I can tell, Golden pretty. Day. Anyways, um, it's 6.03, I'm gonna suggest we get started. Okay, I would like to call to order this first meeting of the new year of the Palo Alto City Council, a regular meeting of Monday, January 4th. It is 6.03 p.m. Uh, first item of business, I would just like to ask any dignitaries or representatives thereof, please raise your hand in Zoom if you'd like to be recognized and we will do so. And with that, if the city clerk would please take the roll. Council member Cormac. Here. Vice <clears throat> Mayor Du Bois. Here. Council member Phil Seth. Here. Former Mayor Fine. Here. Former Council member Here. Miss. Here. Council member Ku. Here. Council member Tanaka. Here. Seven present. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we now like to recognize a couple of our dignitaries. I believe I want to recognize us and also. There, I believe we had a representative uh, from Senator Baker's office, so just want to recognize them as well and do invite you all to speak on the items later in the night. And with that, let's please move on to our special orders of the day. First is the swearing in of our four new and incoming council members, Lydia Koo, Greg Tanaka, Patrick Burt, and Greer Stone. Congratulations to you all and clerk, if you'd please. If everybody except for Lydia will go off video. Okay. <laughs> Lydia, if you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Lydia Ku. I, Lydia Ku. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. The Charter, the Charter of the City of Palo Alto. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, the city, the Charter of the City of Palo Alto, the Charter of the City of Palo Alto, the Constitution of the State of California, the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter upon which I am about to enter congratulations I would thank shake you. your hand <laughs> thank you Beth thank, thank you. you Mr. Greg Tanaka If you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Greg Tanaka. I, Greg Tanaka. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. 
The Charter of the State of Palo Alto. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith. And I'll bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. And that I take this obligation freely. And I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservations. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations on your Thank second you. term. Appreciate it. Mr. Pat Burt. If you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Patrick Burt. I, Patrick Burt. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Stone. Hello. Hi. You ready to do this? I'm ready. Let's go. Raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I, Greer Stone. I, Greer Stone. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. The Charter of the City of Palo Alto. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter, upon which I am about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Glad to have you. So should we proceed Beth? Yes, you can go ahead. Everybody can, the new council can come on camera. Well, congrats and uh, welcome to all the, the new council members and the returning council members. Uh, so the next order of business is um, election of the mayor and the vice mayor. Um, so I'm going to manage the first part of that as the, the vice mayor. And so uh, the way it's going to work is um, 
First, we're gonna call for nominations from council members for the position of mayor. Uh, council members can nominate themselves or another council member and there's no second required. Um, after collecting the nominations, I'll ask people to speak uh, in the following order. So council members who made the nomination will speak first, then other council members could speak. Um, uh, while the council member who's nominated may speak and then other council members can also speak after that. And then once we've heard from all the nominations on council, uh, we'll hear from members of the public and then we'll vote. And since we're using Zoom this year, uh, in order to ensure that all the council members vote simultaneously, we're going to text our votes to the city clerk and the deputy clerk, and they will tally up the votes. And if we don't have a majority, we'll then uh, proceed and do another round of voting. Um, so I guess the floor is now open for nominations for mayor. Um, I would like to speak. I'm trying to find the um, raised hand. Yeah, if you can raise your hand, I, I see uh, Council Member Felseth. So, uh, who do you want to speak? Go ahead, uh, Council Member Felseth. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, I'd like to nominate Tom Du Bois for mayor. Um, this is going to be Tom's seventh year on council. He has okay, been Eric, consistent. Let's just stop there. Let's see if there's any other nominations. Um, There are any other nominations? Okay, so um, go ahead, Eric. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, should I? <laughs> this will this will be Tom's seventh year on council, and he's been consistently a thoughtful and a voice for reason and data driven thinking, and for carefully looking at all sides of a difficult question. You know, I know Tom to be a smart, mature, and sensible individual, a champion for Palo Altans. In his six years on council, most recently as vice mayor. Tom's built a wealth of experience that will serve him and us well as mayor. He served on all five council committees and he's chaired Valid. four of them. <clears throat> uh, policy and services, finance, city school and rail. He's also served as council liaison to a wide range of commissions uh, and working groups. He knows how the city works and how to work effectively with staff to map policy into practice. All of us came to this role with a passion to do things. And Tom's been an advocate for regional recycled water, for rental protections, for safe parking for RVs, for Wilton Court, Buena Vista, the affordable housing overlay, for increased funding for affordable housing, for government transparency, for preserving local zoning control, for support for our retail and for citywide fiber. Tom is no stranger to advocacy. But one of the differences between being a council member and being mayor is as mayor, you have a much greater responsibility for how to get the most out of council as a group. It's a bit of a shift because it becomes less about your own passions and more about how to support and facilitate everybody else's passions, including those who you might not completely agree with. And that's really important because nobody agrees on everything, either on council or indeed within our community. As mayor, you have to find the strength in ideological diversity because we represent all Palo Altans. Okay? And to foster that diversity of view, even at the same time you help the group uh, close on the best decisions, even if sometimes it might not be your own personal choice. It's a little bit different hat to wear. And frankly, not everybody has the same comfort or passion for both the athlete role and the coach role. But Tom does have that passion and I know he'll serve us well. He's shown as a committee chair, and also in his private sector career, and he'll do it as mayor in this most challenging year ahead. Thus, I nominate Tom Du Bois for mayor. Thank you, Eric. Uh, so uh, I, I thank you for those words and uh, accept the nomination. And uh, if elected, I look forward to working with the new council over the next year. Um, are there any other council members that would like to speak? Okay, uh, Council Member Cormack. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. And I thank um, Council Member Phil Seth for nominating uh, the Vice Mayor for Mayor. I just wanna speak very briefly about how uh, the Vice Mayor and I have learned how to work together. Um, sometimes that's required frank conversations, but listening to Council Member Phil Seth speak about ideological diversity, um, I truly believe that when Council, sorry, Vice Mayor Du Bois and I 
um, have worked together, we've gotten to better outcomes and we've done that multiple times. So I'm pleased to support your nomination. Thank you, uh, Council Member Burt. Yes, thank you. Um, this is going to be a, an exceptionally challenging year and I'm glad that Tom Du Bois is in a position to lead our council and the city through this year. Uh, Tom's smart and thoughtful and he communicates clearly and he's pretty unflappable. Uh, that's going to be uh, a real asset as we uh, encounter a, a whole bunch of challenges that frankly, uh, many of them will be unanticipated this year. He's shown that he listens, learns and grows. Um, he brings strong policy and financial experience on the council uh, uh, from his council experience and his experience as an executive in the private sector. And Tom does this job because he's focused on serving the community as a representative of, of all of our residents uh, without any political aspirations of his own. Uh, just as importantly, I think that Tom will be fair and balanced in how he respects the council and everyone who lives and works in Palo Alto. And I look forward to supporting his leadership as he will work to support all of our efforts uh, through this tough year. So uh, look forward to voting for Tom. Thank you, uh, Council Member Koo. Uh, I too wanted to thank uh, Council Member Filsa for nominating um, Vice Mayor Tom Du Bois for the mayor position. Um, um, Vice Mayor um, Tom Du Bois, throughout all his years serving the city of Palo Alto, has always been about this city, the soul of the city, as he said during his campaign, uh, and how important it is to Palo Altans. And um, over the but uh, in addition to everything that everybody has mentioned already, that Tom is a fair, high, high integrity, ethical person, but also very um, um, balanced. Um, he also has, uh, uh, he has also spent a lot of time um, delving into mental health of the teens, as well as um, for the seniors. There are vulnerable populations in our community that he also listens to and is present in their lives. Um, over this winter break, he actually spent many days serving uh, hot lunches, uh, distributing hot lunches at La Comida and um, the organization thanks him very much. Um, so I, I look forward to uh, supporting you and serving with you um, in this uh, upcoming year. Great, thank you. Um, seeing no other hands, I think we'll go to uh, members of the public. Um, if anybody would like to speak about the nomination. Any members of the public that wish to speak to the nomination of Tom Du Bois for mayor, please raise your hand and I will call your name. Uh, Supervisor Simidian. I think he was just saying he was present, but we'll leave it up to I time. think so too, he left his hand up, so I wasn't quite sure. I will uh, withhold comment until after the election of the mayor and the vice mayor when it is uh, opportune time for me to bundle my comments together. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Supervisor Smidian. Winter Dellenbach to be followed by Rebecca Eisenberg. Winter, go ahead, you have two minutes. Yeah, I'd just like to really, uh, I uh, would be thrilled uh, uh, having Tom to be uh, mayor. I remember when I had the privilege of introducing him uh, when it, for his second run of council during his campaign. And I, he was the only person I endorsed uh, during that campaign cycle. I, I very seldom ever endorse anyone. And uh, his intelligence, his uh, ability to be rational, to think deeply about issues, um, but he couples it with a very good heart and a good sense of humor. And humor sometimes can be a very magical uh, uh, an important um, ingredient in bringing a council uh, together 
um, and helping a council that sometimes has uh, difficulty to get to uh, the next step. And Tom has often been able to add that ingredient uh, into his uh, council work. And I really appreciate that. I appreciated very much, Tom, your uh, work on uh, public safety reform and certainly uh, your leadership in renter protection. And I'm looking forward to uh, your increased reader, leadership as mayor. And I think you're just uh, the perfect choice for mayor at this time in our city's, um, uh, um, at this point in our city's history. So congratulations. And I'm looking forward to those votes for you tonight. Thank you, Winter. And our final speaker is Rebecca Eisenberg. Rebecca, go Hi. ahead, you have two minutes. Thank you so much, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'd like to speak also in favor of Tom Dubois, even though, Dubois, even though I'm not a huge fan of the tradition of vice mayor almost automatically becomes mayor, I am in favor of this appointment. Um, in particular, I think that Tom Dubois has demonstrated the type of temperament that I think is crucially needed right now at this time and for this city. Temperament, I believe, can be even more important than experience, which he has. Um, I know there are a couple high profile exceptions, maybe just one involving a blog post, but I've forgiven him even without a specific direct apology. Um, so, because I think that is an exception to the rule of basically respect and cordialness and really treating other people, including me, who often disagrees with, um, you know, with respect and, and calm. I think that really is the kind of temperament that the city needs right now. And I'm happy to support the nominee. And I wish him and the new council to whom I congratulate the best of success. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. And we have several other newcomers to speak. Uh, phone caller with the last three digits of 603 to be followed by Maura Omen and then Shawnee Kleinhouse. Phone caller with 603. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Yes, I would just like to take this opportunity uh, uh, a few minutes to support the candidacy of Tom Du Bois for mayor. Tom has worked tirelessly over the past six, seven years to assist and support the residents of Palo Alto. He really has viewed his service on city council, and he's told me this many times, as a public service to the community. And he remains extremely focused on helping residents as his primary goal. Besides being extremely hardworking and dedicated to his family and to his own job, Tom is always prepared and thoughtful in his comments on council. Serving as vice mayor during this pandemic time has shown his skills and his ability to be a true leader for our own city. I wanna take this opportunity to thank you, Tom, for all you have done, and I wish you the best as mayor. Thank you. Our next speaker is Maura Omen, to be followed by Shawnee Kleinhouse. Maura, go ahead. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You Hi, thank connect. you so much. I wanna congratulate everyone who's joined the um, council today. And I also especially wanna say thank you to Tom Du Bois. He has um, been a wonderful support for our youth in the community. I am the uh, new executive director of Youth Community Service and Tom took time out on a Sunday to be part of our Make a Difference Day in October. And he uh, spoke to our youth and talked about the importance of civic engagement and um, uh, youth service in the community. So I am so very grateful that he has been uh, such a huge champion of our youth in this community and all of their needs. So I um, 
congratulate him and thank you so much. Thank you, Maura. And our final speaker is Shawnee Kleinhouse. Shawnee, go ahead, you have two minutes. Thank you, congratulations to our continuing and new city council members. And I wish to thank Tom Du Bois for accepting the mayorship at this challenging time. Tom, your thoughtful, sensitive and balanced approach and leadership will be needed more than ever this year. And I wish you the best as you take this responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Shawnee. That's our final speaker, Vice Mayor Du Bois. Okay, thank you. All right, so now we're gonna try a voting. Uh, hopefully everybody has the phone numbers. If you can text your vote in. Vice Mayor Du Bois, we do have a majority voting for the new mayor as Mr. Du Bois. Thank you. I guess then traditionally I would stand up and move over to another seat, but <laughs> that won't <laughs> happen tonight. Um, first of all, thank you uh, to my council colleagues and to everybody for those kind words. Um, you know, I will do my best in this role. And um, First, I want to say again, thanks to uh, former Mayor Filseth for the nomination, um, to my family and friends for their support, and uh, welcome again to the new council members. Um, if, my, if we were in person, I think I would embarrass my family by having them stand up, but I'll just say that my, uh, my kids are on, as well as my brother and his wife and niece and nephew. And uh, I believe my mother is watching on, on the mid pen. <laughs> so uh, stay hi to, hi, hi mom. Um, so I just wanna say, um, you know, being on council, I, I really feel um, is a rare opportunity to serve the community. And public service uh, to me has always been an emphasis on leading through serving. And I think all of us on council have made the commitment to work for the good of our community uh, and the voters have put us here. And so I just wanna say I'm committed this year to getting us working well together um, and functioning as a high performing council. Um, you know, looking at the council, I think this is probably the biggest pro-resident majority on council in the history of Palo Alto. And what I mean by that is we're not, dominated by an influence of big business or development interest. And, and given the amount of money that it took to win in our last election, I think that's really an amazing accomplishment. And, um, and if we were in person with an audience, I'd, I'd tell the audience, give yourself some applause, some applause. Um, so you're, you're welcome to clap in the comfort of your own home. Um, we have a lot to get done in 2021 and I intend to try to hit the ground running um, with our number one focus really being on economic vitality and recovery from COVID. You know, we need to be planning strategically to enable a quick recovery. Um, we're gonna be looking at our budgets and our infrastructure plan over the next several years. Um, and as has been mentioned several times, it's one of the few cities in California without a business tax. I, I think planning for such a tax will, will be on our agenda. Um, you know, and, and even though we're, we're in this kind of very unusual situation, I think we need to keep our focus on our vision for Palo Alto for the next 10, 20, 30 years, not just this year. Um, secondly, I, I wanna focus on kind of land use realignment and incentives for affordable housing. You know, I we will continue to execute against our comp plan. Uh, we need to work to begin our the next housing element, including uh, what is a reasonable allocation. And I expect we'll need to consider changing some of our current zoning to enable more housing production. 
Um, and we're gonna have to get very creative on funding, funding affordable housing. Um, and then my, my third area of focus is to continue our work on our transportation network, including our train crossing separations. I mean, as the economy recovers, we're gonna have to resume our work on traffic management, on neighborhood parking programs, and again, train, train grade separations. Um, you know, some other things I think we'll need to deal with. We're gonna have to really spend some time on the homeless and the increase we're seeing in the RV parking. Um, particularly as Mountain View's ban goes into effect. Um, we're going to have to continue to manage our utilities well and, you know, consider whether we want to add a new utility, which would be high-speed city-run internet service. Um, and then finally, I want to get back to having some fun with city events, um, supporting our neighborhood town halls, and uh, restoring the neighborhood grant program. So just let me wrap up by saying, um, Thank you to our city staff tonight. Um, we have a strong staff in Palo Alto. It's a group of hardworking professionals who make all of our city services possible. So I just wanted to say thank you for your dedication and efforts every day. So um, I look forward to working with, with you, the staff, with the council, and with the community at large to get things done in 21. So thank you. Um, okay, so back. Back to our agenda, um, I think we move on to nominations for vice mayor. And I'd like to kick those off by, by nominating Pat Burt. Um, are there any other hands? I see uh, Council Member Tanaka. I'd like to nominate Lydia Ku. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Council Member Cormack? Um. May I defer to Council Member Filseth, whose hand was raised? Uh, sure, Council Member Filseth. <clears throat> I'll nominate Allison Cormack. Okay, and then Council Member Cormack. I think that's plenty of nominations. I'm just counting here, but no, I don't have an additional one to add. Okay. All right, so um, let me go back to the script here. All right, so I'll invite uh, the council members who made the nomination to speak, um, and then the council member who was nominated could speak. So I, I nominated uh, Pat Burt for vice mayor. Um, just wanna say that Pat was the top vote getter in the last election. These are exceptionally challenging times that need proven leadership. And Pat has deep experience on council. He, during his nine years on council, his nine years on the planning commission, uh, he was mayor twice. He was chair of the PTC twice. Um, and he's been a tech founder and a CEO. And he's, he's experienced the uh, boom and bust cycles in Silicon Valley. Um, and funny enough, Pat has never been vice mayor. Um, Pat consistently thinks strategically. And he also considers the, the pol politics to come up with implementable solutions. So, um, I know Pat, my experience working with Pat is he's dedicated, he's smart, um, he is strategic, he builds consensus. And these are all things I think we're gonna need as we recover from COVID. He, um, he knows how the city functions, he knows how government works. Um, he knows our residents, our business community. Um, he's also shown passion for emergency preparedness, affordable housing, um, and he's passionate about the environment and sustainability. So I, I think he'll be a tremendous help to me as mayor in helping us get Palo Alto back up and functioning well. So I hope you'll join me in supporting Pat for vice mayor. Or, yeah. Um, I believe the next nomination was for council member Coop. Yeah. Um, so I'm nominating uh, council member Coop. I had the pleasure of serving with her for the past four years. I think it'd be great to have um, diversity on council. I mean, on, as best mayor, you know, Asian female, I think she complement the mayor quite well. She, as you guys know, has been a really big champion about trying to do something about the airplane noise. She's done a lot of work around Caltrain, especially around the XCAP and great separations. And what I really like about her is she takes a lot of effort to listen to the community. So she's done a lot of work around 
um, doing surveys, uh, trying to hear what the community is thinking, and really, really puts a passion to it. Um, and I think, as we all know, she really is quite um, fervent about, you know, making sure the quality of life here in Palo Alto is solid. So that's why I nominate uh, Councilmember Raku. All right, and Councilmember Phil Seth. Yeah. So thanks. So so <laughs> so so first of all, I'm really delighted to see this. I think. I'll come back to you. I, I, I think we have good, uh, we have all good choices tonight. So it's gonna be really hard for us to go wrong. Um, let me talk for, about Allison for a minute, pardon me. Um, uh, this is gonna be Allison's uh, third year on council and she served on both finance and policy and services including chair uh, of that. And as uh, council liaison to a variety of Palo Alto and regional bodies, uh, she is disciplined, methodical and exceptionally well-organized. And she attacks problems with a high level of professional, uh, professionalism and critical reasoning that I really admire. And she's supported by our community. Um, Allison got the most votes of any council candidate uh, in the last 20 years and potentially longer. And uh, so she's got the community behind her. We all remember how a year ago we had a deadlock for this assignment between Allison and our now mayor, Tom Du Bois, and that Allison gracefully broke the stalemate by casting her own vote for Tom. The willingness to put the good of the community first, no matter what our own personal goals and objectives are, is just so fundamental to this service. And I so much appreciate Allison setting the bar for how to prove that. And I wish some of our national electeds would take a lesson from her this year and especially this week. That said, uh, we're really fortunate as Palo Altans that we have elected a lot of talent onto this council. And that's important because we have some serious work to do over the next few years, and it's gonna take all of us together to do it. And I fully anticipate that no matter what we do this evening, we're gonna be asking all these nominees to serve as our mayor during that time. Uh, and they'll serve us well, and it's gonna be an honor for me personally to serve with them. So we're blessed to have only good choices tonight. Allison will be one of our mayors, and having been through this, I know that a year as vice mayor is good preparation for that role. It's an excellent year for Allison to get that experience. 2021 is going to be challenging, as the mayor said, but we just appointed a really capable mayor. We'll have a strong council and a strong city staff. So it's an appropriate time for us to take this opportunity to make this investment in both Allison and frankly ourselves as our future council. Uh, so I nominate Allison. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, now we'll go to the council members who were just nominated in the same order. Uh, so Pat Burt. Well, thank you. First, I'd like to say that um, I would really look forward to um, either Council Member Koo or Council Member Cormack uh, serving as vice mayor. I think that they would both serve the community very well. Um, I will say that this year, uh, coming in the, uh, the wake of, of the incredible disruption that's been from COVID-19, the still the, the public health emergency that we are in the midst of and which is actually presently at its very worst of the entire pandemic. And then the uh, very disruptive economic impacts on our city finances, on our private sector, on the individuals in our community, all of those things combined make this for uh, an exceptionally challenging time. Um, I feel capable to be able to help uh, Mayor Du Bois uh, and the city staff work through these challenges to adjust our, our city budget to really uh, respond to the uh, needs of the community that we have that are really more people oriented uh, than ever before and certain exceptional needs that have emerged from the, from the crisis that uh, didn't even exist beforehand. And, the difficult challenges of reallocating our resources to meet those needs and then to begin the transition in just the next few months toward uh, a gradual return to normality and a recovery economically. And frankly, the economics of, of um, our city and the revenue for uh, the city are how we provide the services to the people of the community. And this is going to be a very difficult time. Uh, so I, I look forward to helping to try to build uh, a balanced approach and build a consensus on both the council and the community for difficult decisions as we go ahead. 
to focus on our transportation and our housing needs, particularly uh, the affordability of housing for all income levels, uh, and then to move on to uh, the great challenges of our environment and climate change, which is an emergency ever bit as great as the, the one that we're presently dealing with. So um, I, I hope to be able to uh, support you in whatever capacity. Thank you. Okay, uh, Council Member Kuhn. Uh, first, I wanna say um, thank you to Council Member Tanaka for nominating me. Um, uh, this is, as uh, Council Member Bird had mentioned, that uh, this is going to be a very challenging year. We do have to uh, focus on COVID um, recovery, not only in our economy, but also to ensure that the residents and people here um, are safe and healthy. Um, so we do have that to, um, to, to um, deal with and to work out. But more importantly also is not to forget um, the vulnerable population in our community and that we are well-rounded and that we are uh, involved in uh, ensuring that everyone here in the community is well taken care of. And so mostly to bring it back home, to be focused at home here in Palo Alto and to reclaim localism. And to make sure that as we're doing this, um, that, <clears throat> we come up with a good plan in order to make sure that we are also focused on small business uh, owners and uh, at the same time encourage the larger ones. Um, and I believe that we, I believe that I can support and can also help uh, the Mayor Du Bois in uh, working this out. Um, but, while I talk about reclaiming localism and to focus here locally, uh, we must not also forget and keep an eye, our eye out on what the regional uh, issues are. We have huge challenges uh, in terms of um, with our arena allocation, what ABAG and MTC has allocated to us. Um, and at the same time, we have state legislation that is gonna be um, uh, removing or trying to impact our local control. So um, I believe that that's something that we have to be well-rounded on and to ensure that, and throughout the years that I have been council member, uh, I have been uh, making sure that, um, the, that we do uh, vote and we do take the, um, the uh, likes and dislikes of the residents of Palo Alto um, on the regional level and state level as well. And that's something that we must not forget that we have to be well-rounded. Um, so again, thank you to council member Tanaka and also to um, Palo Altans for all your votes and uh, re-electing me. Thank you. Okay, and uh, council member Corbett. Thank you, Mayor Du Bois. Um, and thank you, Council Member Phil Seth, um, for, your, for your kind words and um, for recognizing that actually having a contest for vice mayor is I think actually a positive. So um, I just wanna say a few words about being a leader because I think these roles are less about um, philosophy and more about uh, the way that we do our work. Um, so a couple things about being a leader, three things for me. Um, the first is that being a leader means making difficult decisions. Um, where the right choice may be unpopular. Um, I have proven my ability to do this last year, for example, with the budget and also with the Foothills Park vote. And we have more of these very difficult decisions coming and frankly, they're coming quite soon. Being a leader also means putting the needs of the group or organization ahead of your own desires. Um, I have also proven my willingness to do this uh, last year as uh, council member Phil Seth mentioned in January and I had the opportunity to do so again in December, and I did. And then finally, um, it's, it doesn't really happen as much in COVID. It's not, it's not quite as obvious to people, um, but leaders need to show up in bad times and in good. Um, and I've done that throughout my council tenure. Um, difficult events, um, such as the funeral of an employee or uh, the solidary Sunday service of the black church that was vandalized. Um, and happy events such as volunteering at Foothills Park over the weekend 
um, to help families find the right hike uh, and also um, attending the firefighter academy graduation. Um, these are things that um, are important for me for leaders and I um, have participated in them. Um, so at this point, I just wanna thank all of my colleagues um, for their consideration and council member Phil Seth for the nomination. Okay, thank you, thank you. So at this point, we can hear from any other council member, which I think there's only one. <laughs> so you don't have to comment, but if you'd like to, uh, Greer, you can. Sounds good. Yep. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and wow, yeah, my, my second, the second vote I take sure is a challenging one. Um, but there's no question that Palo Alto is going through one of the most difficult and tumultuous times in recent history. As a city council, we're gonna to need to juggle the pandemic, the economy, helping our local small businesses, which are struggling, honoring our commitment to the Black Lives Matter movement and creating greater opportunities for our communities of color, aggressively addressing the existential crisis that is climate change uh, and making meaningful gains on housing production and affordable housing reform. These are trying times and we need experienced, proven leadership to help guide us, uh, guide our city through it to a healthier and more prosperous future for us all. Councilmember Burt has the proven track record to be the right leader for the times. Councilmember Burt has previously served on the city council from 2008 to 2016. During that time, he was mayor twice and helped lead the city through the Great Recession. Prior to his time on council, he served multiple terms on the Planning and Transportation Commission. And since leaving council, he's been an active voice and community activist on issues ranging from the business tax to grade separation and climate change. It's difficult to imagine many more with the level of institutional knowledge Council Member Burt will bring to our city's leadership. I personally worked with Council Member Burt on several issues uh, and I've been impressed with his knowledge on a wide range of issues and his consensus building approach to government. Not only did he earn the support of the Palo Alto electorate by receiving the highest number of votes, but he has earned my trust and support over the years we have worked together. Uh, and I'm gonna be uh, honored to support his nomination for vice mayor. Now. While I'm su supporting Council Member Burt, I, I wanna briefly speak towards Cal Council Member Ku's nomination. Council Member Ku has been an effective and staunch advocate for our community and our residents. There are few people, and I, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, that I have met in my life who have the empathy and the heart that Council Member Ku has, and I've been honored to call her my friend over the last several years. Not only does she selflessly serve our community as a council member, but she also volunteers her time at various nonprofits and, and helps serve food to our city's senior citizens. She does this without seeking attention or praise. She simply does it because she's a good person. My vote for council member Bird in no way impugns council member Ku's qualifications for vice mayor uh, or that of council member Cormac as well. I know, she, uh, I know that she will make a wonderful vice mayor in the future, but as previously stated, these next couple of years are going to require a level of experience that only council member Burt brings forward with his decades of Palo Alto governing experience. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, now we'll hear from members of the public who can speak uh, up to three minutes each. Any members of the public that wish to speak regarding the election of the vice mayor for 2021, please raise your hand. Our first speaker is Arthur Keller to be followed by Rebecca Eisenberg. Arthur, go ahead, you have two minutes. Uh, yes, um, I would like to speak on behalf of uh, Mayor, uh, for, former Mayor Burt and former Mayor Council, uh, Council Member um, Ku. I, I feel that they're both uh, qualified uh, candidates. Uh, however, I feel that uh, uh, Councilmember Cormack, um, he said that he was proud because of uh, making certain speeches. Uh, however, the speech in um, the last in, in, in for the count for the, um, uh, the that she made in the uh, city uh, they made for the uh, <clears throat> the. Um, for the, uh, she, she did not uphold the city re requirement that you have to follow the city rules. And the city rules, the city voted 7-0 or to uphold the rule of not having the committee, not have, uh, voting for the, um, um, for the, um, 
for the uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, negotiated settlement, but instead voted for the but she voted for negotiated settlement, and that's inappropriate. So I would I would recommend Councilmember Koo or Councilmember Bart, but not Councilmember Korback for that reason. Thank you, Arthur. Our next speaker is Rebecca Eisenberg to be followed by a phone caller with the last three digits of 603. Rebecca, go ahead, you have two minutes. Thank you so much. Um, so first I wanna say that um, Aaron James says he wants to speak. <laughs> so keeping my time, um, as to me, I support Alton Cormack, she's the only person on the council who has actual training and leadership. She's the only person, she knows by far the most about finances too. And I do think I say that as somebody who knows about finances that she's just exceptionally knowledgeable about finances and she displays the type of temperament as opposed to the other two candidates that I think we need. Um, I wanna point out as regard to um, Lydia Ku, she's a great um, person, but I think that her um, opposition to the settlements that actually may have cost um, the city millions of dollars in addition to put us in violation of constitutional law and um, her opposition to housing, I think um, isn't, aren't, you know, aren't the right points of view at the right time. But mostly I wanna to speak to Pat Burt. Okay, one minute, I have to get through seven points. His temperament, both on the campaign trail and in this past 16 years, um, I witness him smirking at others, um, laughing at speakers, mainly women and people of color while they're speaking extremely disrespectful. Um, not surprisingly, he actually what, refused to vote for any woman or person of color during several commission elections or appointments cycles. I have direct evidence of that for which I was criticized for actually keeping track. Um, his lack of integrity was documented and, and described in a grand jury report in Santa Clara County. Um, he was entangled with a billionaire commercial developer that with regard to pushing through a high rise commercial, commercial tower near Stanford that didn't look good. Um, he spent his campaign criticizing former colleagues. Um, he blamed his inability to create a consensus, for example, about the business tax on his colleagues, including many present. Um, his work as a chemical metal plater for 30 years, uh, being dumping 11 tons of toxic waste into the environment, and the fact that he, he drove CPI, one of his direct competitors, out of Palo Alto on the grounds that CPI, which is in the same business he was in, and their direct competitor on the fact that CPI pollutes too much. For these reasons, I question his judgment and his integrity. Thank you for considering. Thank you, Rebecca. Our next speaker is phone caller 603 to be followed by Valerie Stinger. Phone caller, go ahead, 603. Can you please, un there you go, can you please unmute? There you go, you have two minutes. Okay, thank you. This is Terry Holzmer. I wanna take this opportunity to support wholeheartedly the candidacy of Lydia Ku as vice mayor. For many years, even before Lydia joined the council in 2016, Lydia served the community well, first as a successful business owner, a co-president of a local PTA, and even a volleyball team coach. Later, she took on a leadership role in the Emergency Preparedness Committee in Barron Park and helped lead the effort, encouraging the city to recognize the importance of citizen involvement in emergency situations. In fact, in October 2010, she received the city's 2010 Achievement Award by then Mayor Pat Burt for her passion and dedication on preparedness. But beyond those critical efforts, it's her core beliefs that I believe make her the most qualified to be vice mayor. She is totally dedicated to listening, understanding, and representing residents, the people of Palo Alto. She believes in listening to residents with different perceptions and values, 
and wants to ensure that those voices are fairly heard. She has fought hard to increase and maintain below market rate housing in our city, including her vote on the hotel president. Finally, I would like to restate something that appeared in the Palo Alto Weekly last fall about Lydia. Quote, more than any other council member, she has been the council member for the majority of residents who don't have connections at City Hall and feel underrepresented. Close quote. I feel it's long time to have such leadership on our council. I hope you will vote for Lydia. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Our next speaker is Valerie Stinger to be followed by our final speaker, Aaron James. Val there you go, Valerie, you go. two minutes. Thank you. From my experience and my tenure on two commissions, I have familiarity with each of the three vice mayor candidates and I know them all to be qualified. They would all make us proud. Of these, however, I am speaking to council member Cormack's nomination. I think she stands out among the three. I feel that I know council member Cormack well, and yet I am still impressed with her preparation, the depth of her preparation and the thoroughness of her preparation on each agenda item that council deals with. It has been noted that there are a number of challenges before council this year. Council member Cormack has an approach that it is important in this environment. She brings everyone to the table. She listens and she understands, she solicits and understands their needs and incorporates the needs of all sectors into a recommendation so that no one is excluded and all com community values are valued. Thank you. Good luck to all of you. Thank you, Valerie. Our next speaker is Aram James to be followed by Winter Gallenbach. Aram, go ahead, you unmute. I've tried. There you go. You have Thank two you. minutes. So I'm going to comment um, that um, you know my my contacts with Allison Cormack and seeing her in public, extremely well prepared. I, I can't fault her for that. Uh, that's a really good skill. I ran into her into her at a human relations commission meeting a few years back. Um, she's arrogant. Um, she doesn't want to have people like myself, maybe even uh, Rebecca Eisenberg, who have different perspectives be heard. I don't think she is. I think she's an elitist candidate. I hope I'm wrong, Allison, but uh, I'm sorry. But uh, I, I, I just, you know, it's very difficult if you're people that look like you have different views to feel like you're going to get a fair shot from uh, Ms. Cormack. Um, Pat, you know, we had our problems when you were on the council before, but I remember when you came to the Stop the Ban meeting, you were a gentleman. We talked about the importance of having a safe parking program. Um, so, you know, I think that uh, you make a good council member. I'm listening carefully to Rebecca Eisenberg's concept, uh, comments, and I certainly hope, because you can do a really good and extraordinary job without being dismissive of women or being arrogant to anybody or trying to cut people off at a city council meeting. So I think you'd make a good vice mayor. Um, as far as Lydia Ku goes, I couldn't have been more outraged by the comments that you made about the NAACP. Uh, they're on record. My distaste for them is clear. I thought you did the wrong thing on Foothills Park, but then you came back with the downtown streets team. Uh, you made some really good comments. I don't think you want to cover up that scandal. And ultimately, I think we need you on the council for your diversity, for your, you know, and the fact that you have done so much for the community on lots of levels. I probably won't with, agree with you on a lot of things, but I would say tonight, we need to speak out for women and people of color and put Lydia Ku on as our vice mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Aram. Our next speaker and final speaker is Winter Dellenbach. I hit the raised hands by mistake. I'm so oh. sorry. Pass on me. Okay, we will um, disable your talking. Uh, Mayor 
Du Bois, there's no other speakers. Okay, thank you, City Clerk. All right, so uh, we will go ahead and vote again by texting uh, the same numbers you did last time. Um, here is the vote for vice mayor. Um, we do not have a unanimous vote. We have council member Burt voting for council member Burt. Council member Cormack voting for council member Cormack. Mayor Du Bois voting for council member Burt. Council member Philseth voting for council member Cormack. Council member Ku voting for council member Ku. Council member Stone voting for council member Burt and council member Tanaka voting for council member Ku. We will need another uh, second vote. Okay, so we can, um, since there was no majority in that first round, um, any council member who'd like to speak further could speak at this time. So if you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. Otherwise we'll just do a second round of voting. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody raising their hands. So um, should we just go ahead and vote again? Mayor Du Bois, I'm just confirming with Nellie that we both got the same vote count. Okay. So we do have a majority vote. We have Council Member Burt voting for Council Member Burt. Council Member Cormack voting for Council Member Cormack. Mayor Du Bois voting for Council Member Burt. Council member Philseth voting for council member Burt. Council member Ku voting for council member Ku. Council member Stone voting for council member Burt. 
and Council Member Tanaka voting for Council Member Ku. So Council Member Burt has been elected Vice Mayor for 2021 with four votes. Okay, thank you. And so uh, welcome to Vice Mayor Burt and thank you to Council Member Ku and Council Member Cormack. I think again, I'd like to echo Council Member Phil Seth's comments that we had three, three strong candidates. Um, so the next order of business is a resolution honoring the outgoing Mayor Fine. And that resolution uh, will now be read by Council Member Cormack. Thank you, Mayor Du Bois. Whereas Adrian Fine served as council member from January 2017 through December 2020, including as vice mayor in 2019 and mayor in 2020, and whereas during his tenure as mayor, our city faced an exceptionally difficult year due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the resulting economic recession and calls for much needed social justice and police reform. This resulted in challenges on many fronts, which gave Adrian a chance to demonstrate his collaborative leadership skills by repeatedly reaching out to former mayors and stakeholders, throughout the city and beyond, assigning each council member a relevant and specific role early in the coronavirus response, and playing a critical role in coordinating both communications and our public health response. And whereas Adrian strived to serve the whole community, people who live here and people who work here, businesses big and small, public and private schools, hotels and restaurants, by opening up California and University Avenues for people and restaurants and leading the implementation of one of the biggest budget cuts in city history hard but necessary decisions were made, which were prompted by the dramatic reductions in tax receipts from sales and hotel stays, which proved our interdependence of neighbors, residences, business, city services is much more. And whereas Adrian immediately responded to the murder of George Floyd with a powerful Black Lives Matter resolution, speaking at one of the largest protests our city has ever seen, supporting and promoting a mural in front of City Hall, the creation of four ad hoc committees which advanced significant reforms to our police department, and launched a citywide diversity and inclusion initiative. And whereas throughout his years on council, Adrian was a consistent and urgent voice for Palo Alto's future, one with more homes for more neighbors of all ages and backgrounds, with better transportation choices, with Foothills Park open for all, and with a focus on investing in opportunities for both current and future residents and providing high quality city services. And whereas Adrian led the update of zoning and other regulations to support housing, transportation, and local businesses, including the housing incentive program, the affordable and workforce housing overlays, accessory dwelling unit changes, planned home zoning, updates for local retail businesses and parking reforms. And this is the last one. And whereas Adrian demonstrated his commitment to transportation solutions across the region by serving on the Caltrain Local Policy Maker Group, the Rail Committee, and the Palo Alto Transportation Management Association, helping to create a more sustainable future for Palo Alto. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the City of Palo Alto hereby commends Adrian's outstanding public service and gratefully records both its appreciation and the appreciation of the citizens and business of this community for his meritorious service and commitment as mayor, especially in this most trying year. Thank you for that. Um, now, if any uh, other council members would like to speak to the resolution, uh, please raise your hand in Zoom. Uh, council member Tanaka. Yeah, so I, I've, I've known uh, our former mayor, Adrian Fine, for quite some time. Uh, I served with him for a while on the planning commission. He did an amazing job there. Um, really understands community, really has his heart in trying to make, make Palo Alto better. Uh, also had the pleasure of campaigning with him as well, um, missed that. And um, also, uh, he's my, well, he was my neighbor when he was in college chair, so you know, definitely loved hanging out with you. And of course, serving with you on, um, on the council. So you will be missed. Uh, I think the committee will miss you. So thank you so much for your service. And you know, I think um, maybe one day you'll step back into the role and continue to serve in some, some capacity, but wanted to thank you for your service and appreciate all that you did for us. Yes. Uh, council member Cormac. Thank you, Mayor Du Bois. In addition to all of the formal things that are in the uh, resolution, I just um, really wanted to say that I have always appreciated um, Adrian's bravery um, and his willingness to say um, important things. Um, and that's been coupled with his ability to compromise. Um, it's been extraordinary. And I think um, having a person who is the six of six children 
um, I think served us very well, especially last year when there were so many changes and we had to adjust on the fly. Um, Adrian, enjoy your family. Truly, there's nothing more important. Um, former council member Ness. <laughs> Thank you. Am I unmuted, I hope? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I think what Adrian brought to the party is a reminder of what's happening in our community. One of the one of the evidences we noticed right after the last election is the number of people who talked about the lack of housing for young families. And Adrian has often mentioned that he's one of the, I think, Adrian not if I'm correct, one of the few in your class at Gunn who hasn't had to leave Palo Alto. I think he's been a great reminder of the young family. He now has a, a son that's about two months old and maybe three. And I think we need to remember that there's a whole group of the 30s and 40s that are living in our community that are having trouble staying here. In addition to that, Adrian, you are a terrific leader. You are firm, you are fair. Um, I think you did a great job. Sorry you had to leave this year, but let's hope that you come back another time. You've got lots of time left to do it. So we wish you well. Thanks for your service. Yeah, and Adrian, I'd just like to say, um, while we didn't always agree, I, I really appreciated your dedication. Um, you advocated for what you believed was best for Palo Alto and just wanted to say thank you for your public service and best of luck to you and your future endeavors. Okay, I think, um, I think we'll continue. Uh, at this moment, we will go ahead and um, hear from the public. And so again, if you'd like to speak to this resolution for each, actually, I think before we uh, go to the public, we should, uh, uh, do we go to the public? We do go to the public. All right, let's go to the public. And then when we come back, we will vote on the resolution. So if you'd like to speak to this resolution, uh, please raise your hand. Any members of the public that wish to speak regarding the resolution for former council member and mayor Adrian Fine, please raise your hand. We will start with Supervisor Simidian to be followed by Arthur Keller and then Rebecca Eisenberg. Supervisor Simidian, go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor and council members. As I indicated earlier, I, I'd like to see if I can't uh, squeeze all of this into two minutes in respect of your time. Uh, my congratulations to all four of the newly elected or re-elected council members. Uh, you've stepped up during uh, challenging times and good for you and good for us. Congrats to the mayor and the vice mayor. Uh, I know from my own tenure as mayor that uh, every small thing suddenly becomes uh, a matter of great concern when you walk uh, up and down the streets of the city where you live and are privileged to serve as mayor. So uh, good on you for that. Um, uh, for uh, Adrian and for Liz, uh, Adrian Finalist Ness, uh, my thanks and congratulations to you both uh, on your public service. Uh, I support the resolution before you, uh, not that uh, it needs any additional support. Uh, we were pleased at the Board of Supervisors to pass resolutions thanking and honoring both of these public servants for their uh, time uh, on the council and in Liz's case in uh, prior service. Uh, I mentioned to someone, uh, if I can go slightly uh, to off topic to the next item, Mr. Mayor, uh, that I uh, was going to be able to say a few words for uh, Liz Niss in connection with her 35 years of public service. And the first uh, response I got was, well, for God's sakes, don't spend 35 years recapping it all. Uh, so I'll spend 35 seconds now left just to say, Liz has always been committed to being uh, in touch with the folks she represents. And it's a, it's a talent and a trait that is too easily dismissed. Um, people will feel removed from their elected officials. You can't represent people's views and values if you don't hear them. Uh, the fact that Liz spent uh, the time she did having a cup of coffee on the phone, uh, walking the neighborhoods of this community uh, and others that she served um, was reflected in the work she did. Um, uh, so uh, she will be known for a lot of individual accomplishments, but in terms of her style and her uh, contribution over 35 years of public service, uh, let it be remembered that uh, she was always someone 
uh, deeply committed uh, to listening to, hearing from, understanding the views and values of the folks she represented. Congratulations to you, Liz. Congratulations, Adrian. Congratulations to you all tonight. Uh, it's a celebratory evening and um, next meeting, uh, I know you'll get down to some serious work because there's plenty to do. Thank you for including me tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Smidian. Thanks, Joe. Our next speaker is Rebecca Eisenberg to be followed by Senator Josh Becker and then Assembly Member Mark Berman. Rebecca, go ahead. Thank you so much for letting me speak. I'm honored and proud to speak on behalf of my friend and someone who I'm grateful for and admire, Adrian Fine. From the first time I met Adrian, it was clear to me that he was a truly caring person. He stepped out of a meeting to connect with me and I really appreciated that. Uh, it shows that Adrian is a person who considers the feelings of others, who thinks about um, something that's happening from the point of view, from the perspective of others. And that is far more rare than it should be, especially in politics. And Adrian, I'm so grateful for that. I also think, and something I was taught by my dad, the federal judge, that I really believe that the measure of a person is how they behave um, to those with whom they disagree, rather than those from whom they want something or are already aligned. And um, although Adrian and I, I'm, I'm quite certain, share you know, very similar goals, you know, we sometimes disagree on strategy. And in that regard, I've always found Adrian to be so respectful, cordial, you know, having the right temperament, kind of like what I said about Tom Du Bois. Uh, and that's really important and shows a true mark of leadership. I mean, as Octavia Butler put and many others, you know, the real, in my mind, the real, the way to really assess whether a person is a leader, I think has to do with two things. One is courage. The other is integrity. And Adrian Fine stands out in those two regards. And I think he stands out as contrasted with many of our local leaders, you know, over the past many years. And I'm so grateful to Adrian. And of course, the fact that he has stepped out from this in order to spend time with his kids as a man means something. And it, 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 sets, it sets a tone and a role model for others. I don't know if you heard that. It sets a tone and role model for others. So thank you, Adrian, for your service. And I hope to see you in the government again soon. Thank you, Rebecca. Our next speaker, Senator Josh Becker to be followed by Assembly Member Mark Berman and then Mike Alchek. Great. Oops. Go Great. ahead. Great. Uh, thank you. Um, I wanted to support the resolution and um, say, Adrian, uh, thank you for your service. Um, you will certainly be missed. I know we will stay in touch and I will look to you in the future because I know you will stay involved and I will see you either cycling or, you know, at the Caltrain um, and uh, turn to you for uh, some of your insights and, and, um, uh, on, and reflecting on some of the conversations we've had in your time as mayor. Uh, and your time um, on the council. Um, I, I want to, uh, similar to Supervisor Smidian, if I uh, could, um, just also uh, you take this opportunity um, to uh, congratulate and thank um, Councilwoman Niss on her service. As long as I've been involved in politics in the Bay Area for the last 15, 20 years, Liz has always been someone that we've looked up to. She's always been there uh, working hard representing our community uh, as a leader with so much experience. And I've just really appreciated the opportunity to watch her, listen to her and learn uh, from her. And um, if I can also uh, congratulate the uh, incoming folks, congratulate uh, Greg, you and your reelection and Lydia on your reelection and uh, welcome Pat with his vast experience uh, back to the council and Greer, uh, I know you'll be a strong contributor with your background and the important role as a teacher and your wife as a teacher who my daughter was fortunate enough uh, to have uh, as a teacher as well, um, bring tremendous experience. So I wanna thank you for 
um, letting me uh, join here and uh, add uh, my voice to uh, Supervisor Sumidian. And I see Assembly Member Berman uh, coming up, who I'm sure will have great reflections from, especially from his time on the council. So thank you for uh, having me here today. Thank you, Senator Becker. Our next speaker is Assembly Member Mark Berman, to be followed by Mike Alchek, and then Margaret Abe Koga, Mountain View Council Member. Mark, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Beth and and Senator Becker. You're absolutely right that I'm having flashbacks to my time on the council. Uh, for example, I thought this item would start around 6:30, uh, and here we are at 7:22. So I'm glad nothing has changed, uh, but good to see everybody and want to uh, give my congratulations to Mayor Du Bois and Vice Mayor Burt, as well as Council Member Stone and Ku and Tanaka uh, on your elections. Adrian, uh, I want to start off by thanking you for being one of the staunchest pro-resident elected officials Palo Alto has ever been lucky enough to have serve in public office. Your dedication to all of the residents of Palo Alto, no matter how long someone has lived here, no matter how much or how little money someone has, no matter if you own or rent, or even if you've been forced to leave Palo Alto due to the astronomical cost of housing, uh, but hope to one day move back to the city they love. Uh, your example is the kind of leadership that all elected officials would be wise to follow. Uh, it's funny, when I was thinking about this, you and I could practically be brothers. Uh, we're both the sons of South African fathers who moved to Palo Alto in the late 70s and early 80s to raise a family. In fact, your dad, Gary, coached one of my soccer teams when I was growing up. And we both served on the city council in our early 30s uh, because we love the city we grew up in and want other kids of all socioeconomic backgrounds to have the same amazing opportunities that we were lucky enough to have. Uh, of course, we have our differences. You went to Gunn, I went to Pally. I think your father is from Johannesburg and mine is from Cape Town. Uh, but we, we share so many uh, similarities, so, much, so many more similarities uh, than differences. And I've just really admired watching you serve on the council, uh, your, your morals, your, your moral compass of, of what's right and wrong, uh, and your willingness to fight for what you think uh, is right and necessary for the greater good of Palo Alto. I, I also uh, admire that you were smart enough to, to get out of public service. I think my wife probably wishes that I was as well. Um, but, you know, I really wish you all the luck uh, with your, your new young family. And I know you're going to stay engaged and I know you'll keep on reaching out to me on issues that you care about. Uh, and just thank you so much for your service to, to all of the residents of Palo Alto. All right. Thank you so much, Mark. And I'm sure uh, Gary is clapping and laughing in his living room. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Our next speaker is Mike Alchek, to be followed by Margaret uh, Bay Koga, and then phone caller, the last three digits of 697. Mike, go ahead. Uh, good evening. I am delighted to be able to raise my voice this evening in recognition for Mayor Adrian Fine's inspirational service. I, I think I may be the only planning commissioner that's still working that um, sat with you. Um, and I first met Adrian Fine when he joined the Planning and Transportation Commission, um, at which point he made a positive impact almost instantly. Uh, seeing you get elected to the city council made those of us familiar with you believe that there was room for individuals with the right qualifications and the motivation to address the issues that present the greatest challenges to the Bay Area um, and the Bay Area's future. I, I, you made so many of us in Palo Alto proud. You were patient and sensitive. You were professional and dedicated. You were compassionate and considerate. You spoke from your heart and you meant every word. Um, but most of all, I, 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 think, I think you were a truth teller. We could always rely on you to give us our medicine and to do so with such a genuinely kind bedside manner. Thank you for dedicating so much time to our wonderful city and for always standing up for what you believed in. Good luck to you, Adrian. Thank you. 
Our next speaker is Margaret Abe Koga, Mountain View Council member, to be followed by phone caller 697 and then Aaron James. Margaret, go ahead. Good evening. Um, this is Margaret Abe Koga, uh, mayor of the city of Mountain View for the next eight days or so. Um, and I just wanted to, I was hoping I could take this time to congratulate everyone on the cel celebratory evening um, as your neighbor uh, to the south. Um, I just wanted to offer my congratulations to the newly elected and reelected members of your city council, and uh, as well as to uh, the newly elected Mayor Du Bois and Vice Mayor Burt. Um, I look forward to uh, working with you all. I um, had the opportunity to work with some of you already. I think um, it's as we know, many of our issues are beyond city borders. And so it's that much more important that we work together collaboratively as neighbors. And I um, have certainly enjoyed working with many of you on regional boards and look forward to continuing to do that. I also wanted to thank and congratulate um, Mayor Fine for his um, leadership this past year, um, having shared the the, the experience of being a mayor in, in this COVID world, I know um, how challenging it must have been. And so I just wanna thank you for your leadership and your courage in leading um, your city during these difficult times. And finally, um, to uh, my dear friend, mentor, uh, Council, Council Member Liz Ness, uh, I guess, uh, with, during her 35 years of service, I think I've known her for almost 30 of those years and have just always appreciated her leadership, her passion, commitment to our communities, our region as a city council member, the county supervisor, um, and uh, have worked with her on VTA. And this year, uh, we, she was really the leader in getting uh, COVID testing in North County. And I just want to um, thank her for her persistence and her leadership and, and all of that she, all that she has done. So thank you very much. Congratulations and best wishes to all of you. Thanks. Hey, Mayor, and to you as well. Thank you, Margaret. Our next speaker is phone caller 697 to be followed by our final speaker, Aram James. Phone caller 697, you need, there you go. You're unmuted, you have two minutes. Hi, uh, my name is Raven Malone. Um, I just wanted to speak about um, Former mayor, I guess, uh, Adrian Fine, as well as former councilwoman uh, Liz Ness. I, I'm just so grateful that I was able to have both of you as part of the leadership in Palo Alto while um, I'm here. And I am also so grateful, Adrian, to be able to say that you were my mayor. Um, I admired your moral compass and you handled yourself well, even when you were faced with a lot of unfair criticism. Um, I look forward to hopefully getting the chance to work with both of you in the future. Um, Adrian, congratulations on your new member of the family. And I'm so glad that you get the chance to enjoy that. And um, also want to thank um, Councilwoman Listness for her leadership and the, your commitment to the betterment of our community. So thank you so much. That's all I want to say. Great. Thank you, um, Thank you for all the public speakers. Um, we have gonna... one more. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. Aaron James. Aaron, go ahead. Okay. Um, so are you able to hear me? Yes, go ahead. You have two minutes. So, Tom, I wanted to speak uh, in reference to uh, you, but I didn't get a chance, uh, didn't get in. Just briefly, I just uh, want to say you have a really good demeanor. I hope that uh, goes through your, uh, your mayorship. I remember sitting down with you six or seven years ago at the Midtown Coffee Shop talking about safe parking. We still don't have a viable program in that regard. I hope that you're gonna push that. I also hope you'll talk with uh, Molly Stump about the ridiculous stuff that when Adrian would, uh, as mayor, would tell people that they couldn't criticize public officials individually. Uh, that just flies right in the, the face of New York Times versus Sullivan. Adrian, You've done a lot of good things. I, I appreciate your uh, uh, efforts regarding Foothills Park. Appreciate the fact that you spoke out on Black Lives Matter. I'm sorry and sad that uh, you've allowed the Perone scandal, the Zach Perone scandal, 
you allowed it to continue during your mayorship. I'm hoping Tom and the council will have the courage to finally order that report on Zach Perone to, to, to be released so we can get some justice there. Um, I look forward uh, again, Tom, to working with you and Liz. Um, you know, we battled, uh, you, you were very much opposed to a safe parking program. I thought your views on, on that and on the unhoused were often extraordinarily draconian. But again, like Lydia Koo on the downtown streets team, uh, you redeemed yourself. You said, we're not gonna allow uh, that harassment of women scandal to go unchecked. And I wanna wish you well in your, your retirement. Yeah, you, you've been around a lot of years and you've, you've given a lot. Adrian, you did a lot over your four years and I, I, I know what it's like to, to raise young children. So good for you. I, I wish you well with your family and we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aaron. Mayor Du Bois, that's our final speaker. Okay, thank you. So let's vote on this resolution. Uh, I'm gonna just read off the names. So Vice Mayor Burke. <laughs> We need to make us first and uh, okay. <laughs> a maker and a seconder, please. I'll need some practice. So anybody want to <laughs> make the motion? I would be happy to move the motion. I will second the motion. All right, so uh, Vice Mayor Burt, do you guess or no? Yes. Council Member Cormack? Yes. I vote yes. Council Member Philseth? Yes. Council Member Koo? Yes. Council Member Stone? Yes. And Council Member Tanaka. Yes. Okay, so that passes on a 7-0 vote. Uh, mayor Fine, would you like to make some comments? Uh, thank you. You're now the mayor, Tom. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for the resolution. It's really an honor. Uh, thanks to all of our speakers, to our supervisor, our state senator, our assembly member, and to our neighboring mayor. Uh, and thank you also to Council Member Cormack for writing the resolution. I'm truly and, and deeply appreciative of all of you. Congrats to our four newly sworn in council members. Uh, congrats to our new mayor and vice mayor. I wish each of you the best in 2021. I also do wanna thank each of the colleagues I've served with, five of you who are up here now, and also former mayors Niss, Scharf and Holman, and council member Wolbach. Uh, and especially wanna thank my family for supporting me over many years. Just a quick couple comments. You all know me, I try to be brief. Um, when I ran for council in 2016, I, I did that because I was dismayed and angry about the direction our city was going. Uh, we were not facing up to the future. I think we have made some progress on housing and transportation issues, but hardly enough. And we need to continue investing in Palo Alto's future. One which I believe should be more family friendly, more diverse, more inclusive, and more economically vibrant a great place to raise a family, to send your kids to school, to start a company, to retire in peace and happiness, or to get a new job. Uh, instead of pulling up the ladder, I really think we need to lay out the welcome mat, and, and I hope our community takes that message seriously. But in 2020, uh, Palo Alto faced enormous challenges, as did many other communities across this country. And, and frankly, as I look back, um, I'm extraordinarily proud of, of the Palo Alto community and how we responded to COVID and other issues. We continue to have one of the lowest COVID infection rates in the county. We faced and addressed enormous fiscal and economic challenges. And we began to understand what structural racism looks like here in Palo Alto from policing to parks. Each of these issues will continue to be a challenge. I also wanna say much of our success in dealing with them is because of our Palo Alto privilege. And I hope we can reflect on that and figure out how to share it better. Finally, uh, tonight is some pomp and circumstance about council members and new titles, but I do wanna finish by personally expressing my deep thanks and gratitude to our city staff. You all do the real work and it goes unthanked far too often, especially for your service in 2020, I will be forever grateful. It's been a pleasure to serve my hometown and I wish Palo Alto all of the best going forward. Thank you all so much. Great, thank you, former mayor, fine. So the next order of business is a resolution honoring outgoing council member Niss. Um, and that resolution will be read by council member Phil Seth. All right, thanks very much. Uh, so uh, uh, this is a resolution expressing appreciation to Elizabeth Niss for outstanding public service as a council member. And uh, uh, this, Liz's career. <laughs> we don't see a lot of these in this town, so this is this is pretty exceptional. Uh, whereas Elizabeth Hayden Niss served as council member from January 1990 through December 2000, and from January 2013 through December 2018, 
and as vice mayor in 1993 and in 2017, and as mayor in 1994, 2000, and 2018. And I'm glad I could take a breath during that. Uh, whereas Liz has served Palo Alto and the region for over 35 years, beginning her elected service in 1985 as a trustee of the Palo Alto Unified School District Board of Education, <clears throat> and then serving on the Palo Alto City Council from 1990 to 2000, including as vice mayor and mayor, and then went on to serve the Santa, on the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors from 2001 to 2012, including as board president in, in 2009. And whereas Liz, a public health nurse, always focused on improving the community's physical and mental well being, championing initiatives such as healthy cities and healthy communities, bicycle infrastructure, quality food and services programs for seniors, improved tobacco regulations, and served for many years on the Bay Area Air Quality Management District, including as chair in 2017. And whereas during the 2020 COVID 19 pandemic, Liz pushed for testing and contact tracing and helped North County cities secure regular testing sites and has supported the county in the vaccine distribution effort, all of which earned her a champion of the year award from the Santa Clara County Cities Association. And whereas during her many years of service, Liz uh, always sought to, to balance neighborhood and business interests, uh, supporting for, and fundraising in it for initiatives like the new junior, uh, junior Museum and Zoo and the Palo Alto History Museum, voting to open Foothills Park to all, and also leading economic programs such as restaurant parklets, opening University and California avenues to pedestrians and dining, small business grants, and weekly check-in sessions on Zoom uh, with local retailers and restaurants. <clears throat> and whereas facing the Bay Area's sh housing shortage head-on, Liz has been a constant supporter of expanding housing choices, including support for affordable housing developments such as Maybell, Buena Vista Mobile Park, and Wilton Court, uh, which I had the pleasure of working with her on. Um, uh, updating uh, regulations for accessory dwelling units and launching the housing work plan. And whereas a booster of our city sister cities program, Liz visited and built lasting relationships with five of Palo Alto's eight sister cities, including Oaxaca, Albi, Enchede, Heidelberg, and the Yangbu district of Shanghai. And whereas Liz is such an important, friendly, and notable member of our community, walking the Stanford dish each morning, knowing residents in every neighborhood greeting business owners by first names and always offering her knowledge, relationships and assistance to help solve a problem. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of, uh, uh, that the council of the city of Palo Alto hereby commends Liz's outstanding public service and gratefully records both its appreciation and the appreciation of the citizens and businesses of this community for her decades of meritorious service and commitment as trustee and president of the Palo Alto Unified School District Board of Education, Santa Clara County Supervisor and Board President, and as City of Palo Alto Council Member and Mayor. Uh, introduced and passed January 4th, 2021. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, thank you, Council Member Felsa. Um, so now is the time if some other uh, council members would like to speak to the resolution. And I see Council Member Tanaka. So um, I'm definitely going to be missing Councilmember Ness, um, or former council member, former mayor, former uh, county board super, uh, supervisor, president, uh, school board president. Um, you know, you've been a friend. Uh, you have a wealth of experience. I've learned a lot from you. Uh, how do they make things happen? Your diplomacy skills, um, your your tireless effort to push for COVID testing. Um, so really going to miss you. Thank you so much for your service. Um, really appreciate it. I think the community is a better place because of you. So thank you. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Council Member Cormack. I first met uh, Council Member Niss um, outside the, the courthouse in Palo Alto when I came as a supplicant. I was asking um, if she would be one of the honorary co-chairs for the library bond. Um, and yes, Liz is a wonderful, friendly person. And also she asks really hard questions. So I was super excited when she said yes. Um, Liz, I want to thank you for showing us all the many ways that women can lead. Um, you have been an advocate for women of all kinds to participate. Um, and you are a relentless um, asker for women um, to participate and step forward. And you have made an enormous difference in my life and in so many others. Um, I also want to speak about um, how much you care about the community's health. Um, obviously, the resolution touched on it. 
um, now more than ever. We know the importance of public health and you've cared about that from the beginning and you do it um, you know, so beautifully. So um, thank you, I will miss you. Yeah, thanks Allison. Uh, former Mayor Fine. Thank you, Mayor Du Bois. So Liz, um, you know, this resolution I think hardly does justice to your decades of service. And when I was growing up here, I would often see these red signs around town saying vote for Liz. And I always wondered who is that person, Liz? And now I'm really uh, proud and honored to call you a friend. And I have more voicemails from you that I still need to listen to and I'm sure I'll get a call tomorrow. Um, but as others have said, uh, you have done an inordinate amount of service and betterment to this community, uh, whether it is health, whether, whether it is housing, whether it is transportation, the quality of our air, uh, our parks, our police, um, you name it, uh, Liz has had a hand in it. And I think your service here in Palo Alto is really unparalleled. Um, you know, just I encourage folks as you walk around town, if you look at things and you think something is better, go look it up. Liz may have had a hand in it. And um, even though we're separated by many, many years, um, I've always appreciated how you look to the future and how Palo Alto can preserve what's great about it, but also figure out the next steps uh, to make sure that it's an even better place tomorrow. So thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, Councilman, uh, Vice Mayor Burt. Yes, I'd like to not only echo what others have said, but uh, to really emphasize that Liz's 35 years of continuous uh, service to our community, starting on the school board uh, through very difficult times uh, in the 1980s, through the council when I first got to know her uh, as we were working on the, the SOFA plan. Uh, but during that period, um, Liz also was uh, involved in technology um, and had uh, been the leader in making Palo Alto, uh, I believe the first city in the country with a, a city website, um, instigated the uh, fiber optic loop that um, uh, was one of the first in the country in that and is still reaping rewards for the city. Um, and then uh, as others have mentioned, her public health background has guided so much of her career. Uh, when we look at uh, even a few years ago, the adoption of uh, healthy cities as one of our city priorities. And when we think about the breadth of what that means for the community, uh, it's not merely a slogan. It is a, a whole recalibration of uh, the way that we look at, at our community and our services. And that guides her right through today through uh, her commitment to dealing with this incredible public health crisis that we're in. So thank you for all of your service, Liz. It's been uh, really astounding. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Pat. Uh, Council Member Stone. Yeah, yeah, I think few electeds have as storied of career as, as you, Liz, Liz, and I, I thank you for your service to the city of Palo Alto. And in particular, I just wanna thank you uh, as well. A few years ago when I was teaching seventh grade at JLS, I reached out to Liz to ask her while she was mayor to come out and speak to my students and she graciously did. She came out there, she, she held the room and held the attention of seventh graders, which is no small task, but you did it wonderfully. Uh, the students really loved it, they really enjoyed it, they got a lot out of it and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you for that and, um, and I think that really speaks to, to your service and your, and your ability to to kind of to take any invitation, no matter how small, to be able to make a difference in, in people's lives. And I really appreciate that. And to, uh, and to Adrian as well, I thank you for your service to the city. I really wish you, Jane, and Jane all the best with your new young family. Thanks, Greer. And Liz, I just want to say, I think, I think everybody's said a lot of it already, just such a long list of accomplishments. You've done so many things. School board, three times mayor, County Supervisor. I mean, you've focused in Palo Alto and you've done a lot of work regionally. And even on council, you've continued to be on a lot of the regional boards. Um, and so to have done it so long, it really deserves a, a thank you. I think your work, it really shows, uh, you know, a lifetime of community service and uh, Palo Alto is richer for it. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor Dubois. Dubois. <laughs> 
<laughs> You'll get it sometime. <laughs> so now's the time for members of the public who'd like to speak on this resolution. Um, uh, the clerk will call your name and, and you'll have three minutes. Members of the public that wish to speak to the resolution for former council member Nis, please raise your hand. Our first speaker is assembly member Berman to be followed by Betsy Bechtel and then phone caller with the last three digits of 694. Mark, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Beth. And, and uh, Liz, as I did with Adrian, I just really wanna start off by thanking you for being one of the staunchest pro-resident elected officials Palo Alto has ever been lucky enough to have serve in public office. Your dedication to all of the residents of Palo Alto, no matter how long someone has lived here, no matter how much or how little money someone has, no matter if you own or rent, or even if you've been forced to leave Palo Alto due to the astronomical cost of housing, but hope to one day move back to the city that you love, uh, is the kind of leadership that all elected officials would be wise to follow. You know, I didn't realize before tonight that you served for 35 years, uh, or that you were on the school board in the 80s when I was an elementary school student at Duvenek. Uh, so Great. thank you for all of your service uh, in all of the different roles that you played. We first got to know each other on the campaign trail in 2012, and, and you and I became close confidants uh, once we were both elected to the city council. Uh, I greatly admired your work ethic, how much time you dedicate to, to your role, to, to your job, your willingness to talk to anyone and everyone, no matter their viewpoint, no matter if they agree or disagree with you, uh, and your pragmatic approach to the job. Rather than always letting the perfect be the enemy of the good or twisting yourself in a pretzel to get to know, you were willing to listen to others, to listen to your colleagues across the spectrum on the dais, and to work to try to find consensus. You quit, and you would quickly put aside the last vote to focus on what's next, never holding a grudge or, or letting the last vote cloud your judgment. Uh, I've learned a remarkable, a remarkable amount from you uh, from uh, all the conversations that we had when I was on the city council, conversations we'd have until 1 or 1.30 or 2 in the morning after council meetings, uh, conversations that we'd have leading up to council meetings, uh, conversations that we'd just have at random events where we bump into each, each other. And I miss those random public events. Uh, and I've learned so many lessons from you that have served me really well in my current job in the assembly. Uh, and I look forward to many more conversations with you and with your husband, Rick, in the coming years. Thank you, Liz. Every resident of Palo Alto owes you a huge debt of gratitude for your 35 years of service. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Our next speaker is Betsy Bechtel to be followed by phone caller, last three digits of 694, and then Nicholas Hargis. Betsy, go ahead, you have two minutes. Betsy, you need to unmute from, there you go. You have two minutes, go ahead. Thank you, it took me a minute to unmute. Um, I have known Liz probably more than any of the rest of you. I've known Liz for over 50 years where we both were active initially with the League of Women Voters and AAUW we have worked on each other's campaigns, she first on mine, and then I on hers. And I share many of the comments that have been made previously by others, but I wanna reinforce a few things. First of all, she has done, think about it, she's chaired the Bay Area Air Quality Management Group. She served on regional boards. Most people, and frequently city council members say, I don't wanna go outside of Palo Alto. That's not Liz. She'll be out there working for us, all of us, on regional issues. As for COVID testing, let me tell you, she has been on that from the beginning, saying the only way we can really figure out what's happening related to COVID-19 is to be sure we have adequate testing. As for how much she mentors others, that's absolutely correct. I have uh, received recently communication from others who said she would come to me to offer, help me with a speech. She's helped me, given me advice. So this is very, very important. And other things, if any of you could drive down 101, you see there's a bike bridge under construction. Liz has been pushing that for probably 10 plus years. And we're finally 
seeing that thanks to Liz. And she doesn't just vote for affordable housing, she works hard to make it actually happen. Uh, for example, Wilton Court, and uh, she sought to be sure there was adequate funding for Wilton Court. She didn't just vote on it, she pushed behind the scenes to be sure that there was sufficient funding to make it happen. She supported Maybell, unfortunately we didn't get that. And she's uh, worked and supported along with uh, Supervisor Simidian uh, Buena Vista. So thank you. It's been a great to know you. She's my walking buddy, used to be my running buddy, and I know she'll keep busy. So thank you for all that you've done, Liz. Thanks, Betsy. Thank you, Betsy. Our next speaker is phone caller 694 and then Nicholas Hargis and then Cheryl Klein. Go ahead, you have two Thank minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Beth, it's Nancy Shepard. And I just wanted to chime in with my praise for Lizness as well. Um, of course, I remember her as my vice mayor in 2014 and she really helped me through a tough year on council. We were emerging from the uh, Great Recession, trying to restabilize all of our programs in addition to stabilizing the community that was starting to shift um, with the overbuilding of Palo Alto. Uh, she is somebody who knows who to call and when to call when Palo Alto needs help to move forward. And I've witnessed that many times. Um, she's committed to our community. I agree. I would like to also mention the feat that she did in her early council term when she did get the dark fiber ring to our business district. And now that has been deployed out into all of our school sites which, and into some neighborhoods. In fact, I was watching them um, line the fiber a couple of years ago down in um, the Crescent Park area. Even those, and one of the examples of her generosity of making sure our community wor work was when I left council and she was vice mayor and expecting to be mayor, she generously nominated Karen Holman, who was the high vote getter that during that election term. Even though I looked at Liz's votes from 2012 and realized that I think everybody that voted that year voted for Liz because she was the high vote getter during that term as well, um, during that council run as well, um, with, by over four or 5,000 votes. It wasn't by a small margin. Uh, so, uh, so thank you for all of that, Liz. You have helped Palo Alto stay progressive which is so important to me. And you were a great vice mayor during that term. Thank you for your service and enjoy your retirement. I'd also like to speak just a moment about with Adrian Fine because I did help him with his council campaign, but I did get to know him um, when he got appointed to planning and transportation. It was during my final um, days on council. And I was thinking to myself, finally, somebody who understands urban planning and can help us untangle um, these Palo Alto problems, and, uh, and, and he knew the comprehensive plan, something that was not typical of council can of plan and transportation candidates at the time. I got to know him better when I helped him with his campaign in 2016, and his passion to win crystallized a sad moment for me, which I think we've all been sort of speaking around for years now, that when I realized that the children who grow up in Palo Alto today likely will not be able to return to Palo Alto to live and raise their families due to the high cost of housing. So it seems amazing to me that he was fortunate to live here and serve. His cause to help provide more housing to help solve some of these issues for young families is vital to our future in Palo Alto and the culture that we like to believe that we are a progressive community. Thank you for your service and best wishes to you both. And Adrian, enjoy that family. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Our next speaker is Nicholas Hargis to be followed by Cheryl Klein and then Mike Alchek. Nicholas, go ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicholas and I'm a field representative for Congresswoman Eshoo. On behalf of Congresswoman Eshu and her staff, I would like to wholeheartedly thank Ms. Niss and Mr. Fine for their dedicated leadership and change-making that they've brought to their communities 
over their tenure in office. To council member Stone, congratulations on your election to office. Um, to council member Ku and council member Tanaka, congratulations on your reelection to office. And to vice mayor, mayor Burt, congratulations on your election to office and your election to vice mayor. Likewise to Mayor Du Bois, congratulations to your election as mayor. 2020 and 2021 um, have was the hardest and will be one of the most difficult years, I'm sure, of any of our public service careers. And our office would like to thank the Palo Alto City Council for their fearless leadership in these trying times. Good luck in the year to come, everybody. Thank you, Nicholas. Our next speaker is Cheryl Klein to be followed by our final speaker, Mike Alchek. Cheryl, go ahead, you have two minutes. Hi. Um this is Cheryl. Um, Liz, I want to thank you for your tireless leadership and dedication to Palo Alto um, and making it as diverse as possible. On behalf of the 3,000 residents of Alta Housing and Palo Alto Housing, we especially appreciate your dedication to creating affordable housing. Thank you so much for all that you did to make Wilton Court a reality. We really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to celebrating with you when the building is done in 2022. I also wanna echo Allison's comments about um, your mentoring and supporting and encouraging younger women to get involved in their communities and run for office. Thank you so much for all you've done. And I'm sure you're gonna be behind the scenes helping us in the next years to come. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. And our final speaker is Mike Alchek. Mike, go ahead, you have two minutes. Thank you. I wanted to add my voice to the many tonight who shared beautiful sentiments about Council Member Niss and her extraordinary contributions to Palo Alto and beyond. Council Member Niss, your lengthy example has been an inspiration to me and my wife and our three children. Thank you for investing so much of your energy into our community and thank you for using your voice and experience to promote local government action that aims to improve the lives of so many individuals, many who may never realize just how significant your work has been. Thank you for speaking up on so many issues that represent progressive interests. And finally, thank you for your fearless and sincere advocacy for more aff affordable housing development in Palo Alto. Good luck to you, Ms. Ness. Thanks, Mike. Uh, my name is Kathy Torgerson and I have worked on, I think almost all of Liz's campaigns over the years. And so I can tell you that uh, all the things that you've said this evening really speak to the depth and breadth of her accomplishments. Um, but one thing that I wanna point out about Liz is that she is forward thinking. Um, she rallied for the commercial fiber loop 25 years ago. Um, she has been uh, an advocate of the environment and has done all sorts of green initiatives, including lead certifications and e-waste policies. And just recently, she has really fought for menu labeling with calorie counts. And she did that in 2007, which became a model in the country. So um, uh, maybe Liz has been around for 35 years, but she is a forward thinker in so many areas of government. Um, her public service is a model. So. Thank you, Liz, for three, three decades of, of fabulous service. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Mayor Du Bois, that's our final speaker. Okay, thank you to all, all the speakers. 
Um, so do I have a motion to uh, approve the resolution? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. I think I heard council member Felseth just on the edge there. <laughs> um, again, I, I will just read down the list. Um, so Vice Mayor Burt, how do you vote? Yes. Council member Cormack? Yes. I vote yes. Council member Felseth? Yes. Council member Koo? Yes. Uh, council member Stone? Yes. And council member Tanaka? Yes. So that passes on a 7-0 vote. Uh, congratulations. Uh, council member Niss, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> I would. Um, first of all, thank you to all of you, especially for, for being so, so precise in what you said. Um, it's, it's interesting to serve for that long a time. I never meant to do that. I'm sure you all recognize that this kind of thing sometimes just happens in your life. Um, and in good part, I did it, you know, as a woman, sometimes that was very challenging because there are those who still believe women aren't very competent and really can't get something done. So having said that, let me say another couple of things tonight, aside from thanks and um, thank you for mentioning that, yes, I had served, I, I have served for a while and also in, in leadership roles. And, and uh, I enjoy doing that because for anyone, take on leadership roles because that really is, is when, where you make a difference. So I also wanted to mention tonight, um, I have been very privileged, as you know, to serve as long as I have. Uh, I served in the 90s with people like Joe Semidian, whom you heard earlier tonight, um, Judge Joe Huber, that I'm sure some of you know, and in addition, um, now Vice President at Stanford, Gene McCowan. That it was a fascinating time in, in that period of time of the 90s. And by the end of the 90s, we were named as one of the leading cities in the world, which I think was rather astonishing. And what happened during that period of time, I think is we really concentrated on altering our city from what had been um, somewhat quiet a city, especially for young people, especially for people who wanted to really get started here. So I wanna talk for just a minute about, about balance and where we are now. As you know, um, in the early part of this century, I left and went to the county where we went through two recessions there. But coming back now to what's happening in Palo Alto, I hope as you go forward, you'll think about balance in our community and what balance means. Because I think the balance means that you balance your services, your businesses, and the needs of your residents. And I think one of the ways you're going to know if you're out of balance is if you start having trouble with your budget. And as you go into this next year, it's going to be tough to balance the budget. It's already tough to balance the budget. So I think you're going to know you're out of balance when we look at service cuts, when we look at um, a diminishing role, a diminishing number of service workers, and we, when, when we begin to see cutbacks in recreation. Watch for all of those. And sometimes when you're in office, these things go by you and it's difficult, and you look back and say, that's where that started to happen, or that's where we you know, kind of took the wrong turn. This is going to be a year of watching carefully, I think. Um, Certainly COVID has changed the way everything operates. But I think one of the things that, that I, I have to mention is that many of our small businesses suffer because our offices are empty. And I know we have looked and, and discouraged businesses in, in, many, in many times to, to not come to Palo Alto. I think when we think of how you wanna mix in your community, you do want to mix. You want a good mix of biz, big business, small business, um, all kinds of other service businesses, and in order, especially to have some of the 
um, excellent businesses we've had here on University Avenue and Cal Ave, you do need more people than simply the residents who live here. So having said that, um, I think, as I mentioned, we wanna concentrate on balance as we go forward. I want you to think of balance as you serve the city. And I want you to think of that. And just some advice, think of it in your own life, in your home life, because balance truly is what finally makes it all work. So as we've said, and as I've said, um, I was very lucky to get to serve. I've been lucky to be in many different situations. But I want to leave you with this. You have a precious commodity in, in leading this city forward. This is going to be a major undertaking, I think, in the next couple of years as we come back out of COVID into the economy once again. I know you're all up to it, but I also think there are challenges along the way. So thank you again. Thank you for all the kind things you said tonight. Eric, I really appreciated your reading the resolution for me, about me, that was, um, it was done beautifully. And um, again, I'm going to miss you all, but I'll be watching you from time to time. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, we are, yeah. So um, we actually have one more item, which is oral communications. Um, so if anybody wants to speak on anything that wasn't on the agenda tonight, now's your time. Uh, speakers will get three minutes. Any members of the public that wish to speak to anything not on tonight's agenda, please raise your hand. Our first speaker is Aram James to be followed by Rebecca Eisenberg and then Jill Onan. You have three minutes. Aram, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I just wanna get a, a jump on what my priorities are gonna be for the city council for 2021. Of course, I'm gonna to continue to reach out to the council and do what I can from, uh, from a legal perspective to get you folks to stop the cover up of the Zach Perone matter. How can we in good faith talk about the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, give lip service to it. And then when we have an, what I consider an alleged hate crime by a high ranking member of the Palo Alto Police Department, we pretend like it didn't happen and we wanna to point to racist acts everywhere else, but in Palo Alto, I've got Eric Filsef and, and, and the mayor now, both saying, um, you know, it's a one-off when in, involving police abuse. On this, and Eric, in fact, saying in this, that, that, the, that the, the brutal beating of Mr. Arivalo uh, was a, a one-off when the same, same night, uh, they're looking at, uh, you know, a multi-million dollar closed session discussion of it. You know, it's not a one-off. Let's start to be realistic and look at the, the police abuse that goes on in this community. Um, the safe parking program, Tom, that we talked about seven years ago, what the city is offering now is an embarrassment. Um, you know, I'm, I remember with, uh, you know, the plan, former planning commissioner Williams, uh, Curtis Williams offering this Stop the Ban program, $500 to run, run it ourselves. We need to get people into safe housing. Let's start with a robust safe parking program, not asking the churches to do it. We have the money. I know the budgets are tight, but we got to put our priorities in the right place. We've, I'm hoping that this council is not going to let the city manager pull them around by the nose and stop putting items on the consent calendar that should be action items. Really, really critical that we have more robust discussions on critical, critical issues, especially when we're giving away money to, to uh, one group or another or making you know, contracts for new tasers and new police items. And we, we leave those kind of important subjects to a, a consent calendar. Let, let's be a little bit more robust with our democracy. Um, and Tom, again, I, I ask you to sit down with Molly Stump and discuss New York Times versus Sullivan and let's stop the charade of not allowing speakers to criticize public officials. It's part of our democracy. Let's go forward with that. Um, and I wanna have the council reconsider tasers this year. 
do we really need them when we've used them somewhere in the range of about 30 times over the last 12 years? It's a very expensive item that we can put to better use, put that money to better use. Uh, use. Okay, uh, thank you all. I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. Let's get some work done. I have nothing to say to you. Thank you, Aaron. Our next speaker is Rebecca Eisenberg <coughs> to be followed by Joe O'Nan. Thank you. So um, I like Aaron, my friend, I would like to remind you all of, especially the new council members, which actually there's only one new council member. And of course that's Greer Stone. There's two second term council members and then one third term despite supposed um, term limits council member, I again want to welcome you and congratulate you and also remind you of the campaign promises that you made. Promises of which I was a direct witness um, since you made them in front of me and, and many others. Um, to at least Greer and Pepper, uh, you know, Greer, thank you for mentioning this tonight. Pat, I want to remind you that you promised to support affordable housing which may displease, well, both of you, this may displease some of your large check writers, for example, from Palo Alton's for sensible zoning, as well as some of the wealthiest individuals who wrote you checks, since sometimes some of them are not fond of um, increasing housing. Although some, bizarrely, they're often in favor of commercial development, um, but I can't get into their minds about that. Um, in regards to uh, Mayor Du Bois's wise and accurate comments that it took raising a spectacular amount of money to win this recent election. I fully agree with that. In fact, if you look at the results, um, with one exception being me, there's pretty much a direct correlation between the amount of money a candidate raised and the amount of votes they got. Um, that correlation, of course, goes um, upwards and to the right. Um, with uh, pretty much the biggest fundraiser getting the most votes, except for me, I got almost 8,000 votes spending under $8,000. And that's why, although I didn't win, I, I guess I'm here to say that it, it is possible to reach voters without spending money. And that's why I urge you to consider what I can't believe Palo Alto doesn't have any, um, campaign contribution limits for the next election. I recognize that goes against your own, all four of you, well, I guess all seven of you's personal interest but you all vowed to put the interests of the community above your personal interest and aligning Palo Alto with most of its neighbors. And in fact, not all of its neighbors and having reasonable, you know, in, reasonable campaign contribution limits and actually meaningful and, and real term limits too, would actually be a great first step in showing that you mean to keep your promises. Um, and frankly, don't we all agree that raising money from wealthy individuals and organizations has no relationship to how good a person will do as a leader. Um, in fact, it might be actually opposite. Um, finally, you all swore tonight an oath to protect the constitution, the state and federal. I want to remind you that the constitution has this very important equal protection clause, um, which means you must make a commitment to fight against white supremacy and illegal discrimination against women. Um, Sixth amendment protection means you fight against police brutality and otherwise that I'd be happy to go on more about in the future. But thank you for considering and listening and I, well, and I look forward to a great um, next few years. Thank you, Rebecca. Our next speaker is Jill O'Nan to be followed by our final speaker, Arena. Thank you very go much. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Beth. Uh, council members, my name is Jill O'Nan. I know some of you know me from my prior work on the Human Relations Commission. I want to speak to you tonight about the disastrous opening of Foothills Park. I'm a longtime resident and I'm also handicapped and immunocompromised. During this pandemic, Foothills Park really had become a sanctuary for me. There are very, very few public places that I can go. My arthritis is quite bad and I cannot take walks on pavement. So the dirt trails up in the park were perfect for me as was the limited population in the park. Once it opened, I found that I was essentially excluded. There are, first of all, zero, and I wanna repeat that, zero handicapped parking spaces at the front of the park, which has the only ADA compliant bathroom in the entire park. Not only is that a slap in the face to me and every other handicapped person trying to access the park, it's a violation of federal law. Secondly, the black and brown Latino people I used to see regularly at the park have all disappeared. 
My black neighbor upstairs told me that she is no longer able to access the park. She's an essential worker, low income, and went to the park like I did to relax and try to unwind during this pandemic. But now when she gets to the top of the hill, she's turned away by the guards because the park is instead full of much wealthier people from other communities. We all feel very excluded and are very hurt by the way that nobody on the city council to date has stood up for us. Palo Alto is in fact a diverse community. It includes low income, black, brown, Latino, handicapped, sick and med medically vulnerable people. And none of us have access to the park anymore. Adding insult to this injury, we are never, nevertheless expected to go on and pay for this park through our taxes. So what we have now is not access for all by any stretch. We do not have social justice. What we have instead is implemented a plantation style system of economic exploitation where low income people like me and my neighbors are expected to pay for a recreational area for rich people who live up the hill from us. This is just blatantly unfair, unreasonable, unjust. And I ask the city council to please address it promptly by closing the park down, mitigating the destructive damage that the park visitors are doing mitigating the economic losses that we're all experiencing and giving the community a chance to weigh in on what the ultimate disposition of the park should be. I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, Jill. Our next speaker is Irina to be followed by Jeremy Ehrman. Irina, go ahead. Um, there you go. You have three minutes. Okay. Hi, everybody. I want to welcome the new council, and I hope uh, we can work together. Uh, the problems with uh, Foothills Park, I want to second Jill. It is uh, horrible what is going on uh, with the park. Uh, I'm the one who ran the referendum against the settlement and uh, I get hundreds of emails of, from people who are really very concerned uh, about the situation. First of all, Foothills Park has to be closed immediately and uh, we have to incorporate normal parking system there. Uh, as per my email have designated numbers uh, limit amount of cars we uh, let in and have handicap spots uh, specifically for elderly and handicapped people. Okay, we need to make sure that uh, uh, the resources that go into the park are recuperated through charges and have uh, you know discounts for Palo Alto residents and for uh, parking permits that would allow the uh, Palo Alto residents uh, to write off the taxes, the money that they pay for permits. Uh, and more or less some should do some work to make sure that uh, it's done properly to uh, don't charge Palo Altans twice. Okay, and we need to see uh, how much city resources is pumped into uh, upkeep of the park. Uh, we, need, we need this budget. We need to see the expenses and it has to be open to public uh, to see what's going on with uh, fees versus the costs. And we need to adjust fees accordingly. Okay, and there is huge environmental uh, damage to the park, okay? It's not only in the beginning of the path, it's everywhere, people walking off the paths, people parking off the uh, pavements, uh, dogs are off leash on the trails, uh, and rangers don't have capacity to keep the order, okay? So we need to have this environmental review uh, at least bi-weekly and I want to thank you very much and I need your input please. Please respond and put it on agenda. Thank you Irina. And our final speaker is Jeremy Ehrman. Hello. Hello Jeremy. Good, 
Uh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. You have three minutes. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so back in June, when the council passed the budget for this year, and there was a certain amount of money that was put aside that was going to be revisited, I think they originally said in September or so of funding some of the things that were cut. Um, for example, looking at, it was looking at community services, for example, the children's theater. Um, it's not clear to me that this was done, that people came back to this money. Uh, one of, also, one of the things that was part of that was uh, in June, the council seemed unable to find funding for KZSU, the radio station to broadcast the council meetings. So I was under the impression that that funding had stopped, but KZSU is in fact right now broadcasting this meeting, although the city does not seem to be advertising that anywhere. So I was wondering if there's some clarification as to is the city funding KZSU or are they just doing this out of the goodness of their hearts? And, and if that is the case, then it should at least be advertised that KZSU is broadcasting the meeting because I knew no people that would listen to the meetings on the radio. That was their way of doing it every week. So hopefully the city will clarify where the meeting is being broadcast and how you can listen to it um, because that was an important resource that it's not clear that the city is supporting that right now. So as I said, I tuned into KZSU and this meeting is being broadcast right now. So I hope that the city will uh, look into that and also the other areas um, that were severely cut in June and it was, it was promised that this would be looked at again in the fall and I'm not clear as to whether that was the case. So uh, thank, you very, thank you very much and have a great year. Thank you, Jeremy. Mayor Du Bois, that's our final speaker. Great. Okay, thank you to all the public speakers. Um, that concludes our items for tonight. Uh, normally we would all get together and have a little party, but unfortunately we're not gonna do that tonight, so. Uh, our meeting is adjourned at 23 p.m. Uh, we'll see you guys at the next meeting. Mayor DeVoice, I did want to ask our council members to stand by for a screenshot. Um, so oh, we'll, right. we'll stop the recording and uh, have you have an ability to memorialize this moment. <laughs> let's see. I'm going to ask Megan to chime in to make sure that's happening. And I think Molly and Monique and I will... Turn our videos off. It is, yes. Uh, Darren and I both are taking screenshots once you guys turn your videos off. Monique, oh, there you go. Say cheese. <laughs> yeah. Did you get it? I did. All Thank right. you very much. All right. Meeting adjourned. Congratulations, all. Thank you. Bye. Good night.